and welcome to Art Online, um, the series of you know, interviews we're having during lockdown. Very special guest today, and it's uh, all the way from Amsterdam, Julia from Be Local uh, blog. Hi, Julia. How are you? Hi, Stuart. I'm fine, let's say. How are you? <laughs> what's, uh, what's it like in Amsterdam uh, at the moment? Well, um, it's sunny, which is very weird. But actually, since the first day that we were supposed to stay in, it starts, uh, the, the sun came out, came out. And now it's sunny since one month and a half, which uh, has never happened, I think, in the whole history of the Netherlands. I live here since one year and a half. And for sure, it has never happened since when I'm here. One month and a half of straight sunshine like all the time to have perfect sunshine yes. and choose the time <laughs> yes. that we're all stuck inside the irony <laughs> yeah and yeah but uh, of course we are we are staying in so um, the situation here it's very relaxed because Dutch people are really relaxed about the health issue so uh, you don't feel that you are uh, locked in with the you know, the anxiety or, you know, the panic buyers or all these uh, kind of uh, um, surrounding. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was saying, for me, it's, uh, it has been really weird because uh, I'm Italian. So I was living uh, this situation through the media and also video calls with my family and friends. So I, I saw what was happening in Italy and then uh, I was very anxious at first because I was like, oh my God, this is happening also here and why people are not doing anything about this. And so like the first weeks were really weird. Also because uh, I was, I had the feeling that I was like watching again <laughs> the same yeah. horror movie all, all over again. And now, yeah, now I'm kind of, um, it's, it's bad to say, but kind of used to the situation. I'm just you know, staying in, every day is the same. It's also like the, um, the sun is shining and I don't know, it's like the, 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 uh, the same day over and over again. And Groundhog Day, yeah. Just yeah. Like going <laughs> yeah, around. Like the movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and that's it. So I how hope to come back home <laughs> in Italy well, as yeah, soon as possible. I mean, I suppose that 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 that'd be a real hope, right? You know, when you can actually go back and and see everything. Yeah, it's. I I don't know. I I think not before the end of summer, but that's just my personal uh, uh, opinion, and I'm not an expert of uh, any kind. So I just hope to go back soon. It's the is the only thing to well, see hope. people again. Of course, yeah, no, absolutely. I hope that happens soon. I mean, I, you know what's weird? That um, since when I moved here, I always thought that whatever happened, uh, I was just, you know, two hours, two hours and a half flight from home. It's not, not only if something happened, just in general, you know, I could have gone back for a weekend or, you know, so it was okay. I was living abroad, but you still have, okay, I just, I can just take a plane and, and go to say hi to people. And now, no, I can't. I'm stuck here. So that's the the hardest part but it's not so hard as you know working in a hospital or doing uh, all the um, uh, big <laughs> job the long shift in hospitals yes. or healthcare system mm -hmm. or you know that's that's the real hard in this moment I just have to stay in and read a book <laughs> write for the blog and that's it and of course, the, the the blog is um, you know one of one of the main things you do. You know, be local. Really, really popular blog. You know, you, you write about street art. You write about you know pretty much everything, anything. <laughs> you, you know, really uh, you know interesting uh, articles you you put Thank together. You. <laughs> so, I mean, how do you keep energy going as a blogger? You know, write about the sort of things that you write about in particular at a time like mm -hmm. this when you sort of you, you're not able to get out with the camera which normally you are. Well, so first of all, I had such a long black um, list of uh, articles to do or picture to edit that I could stay in for years, I think. <laughs> but uh, now especially I'm trying to write 
thinking about something, either something more personal, that it was something that I wanted to do since long, long time, but I always uh, postponed it because there was always a festival or an event or something to cover. So now I'm thinking about all the kind of articles I've never written because there was always uh, something to, to be there, you know, so my stuff was uh, uh, put on a side. And then I'm reaching also to some artists to do some interviews and yeah, I, I, will, I will keep blogging of course and I will keep uh, writing, but most of all for myself because this has always been my creative outlet and something to, uh, to, um, to have a nice day. <laughs> I like to, to smile and something that makes me happy. So uh, it has uh, helped me a lot in the past to go through difficult times and I, I trust that uh, this will happen also now. It was using, using blogging as a bit of a release. Yeah, really. yeah, writing in general, mm -hmm. then sometimes get uh, published under the blog uh, if it's uh, decent enough. <laughs> and most of the time it's just, you know, one afternoon that you spend uh, writing down something and then I hate it and I... <laughs> <laughs> try and throw it away but still you know it's uh, it's a um, good way to keep your brain entertained yeah you, how, what's your what's your blogging journey like what what made you start blogging in, in the first place um long story so i start uh, writing online since the beginning of internet i think but i didn't have uh, this blog before that i was writing on uh, the newspaper of the school or these kind of things and uh, i was also taking pictures of street art and graffiti in rome but it was everything you know analogical of course and it was for the yeah the newspaper of the school and stuff like that and then when uh, I start uh, having, you know, a email and start getting into the internet, I had a MySpace at first, but it was more about music. I was into reggae music, so it was like writing about bands and concerts. And then I moved to Slovenia, so I had a Splinter, maybe, one of the first uh, blogs. I've never heard of Spl Splinter. It was Maybe it was, was an Italian thing, I don't know. Anyway, right. one blog about traveling and was very personal and then a bit of travel. And then this blog that I have now starts out as a travel blog about alternative places, mm. uh, mostly the Balkans because I was living there. And it's um, it started in 2012, I think. Yeah. It's amazing the amount of places that you've managed to get to to um, to write about. I always yeah. say before lockdown, I, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking, well, where's Julia now? You know, the, 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 the post would come up and ask you, what literally, what location has she managed to get to now? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a nice life when we could travel. Yes, yes, yes. But, but like, it's it's weird, but I don't miss travel so much, to be honest. It's more, uh, I don't know. Mm, like now, if I could, I don't think that I will be traveling around or even going to festival. Like my uh, obsession maybe now is to go back to Italy, like travel <laughs> towards home, <laughs> like Rome. I want to go there. Um, but yeah, it, it was nice. And also uh, lately, like uh, as you know, because I did it. Uh, together with you most of the time we were traveling mostly for festivals so it was not like the um i don't know the influencer trip uh, <laughs> that's right in wherever we were just going to uh, some cities to to see artists at work so it was not just the place it was also the ambience the atmosphere and yeah this weekend would have been the noir taberdin festival that's Which right. is also, is, is it the last time we met? Like when I It was, you? yeah, no, it was. It was last year in Aberdeen, New Art Aberdeen last year. And, uh, or maybe we met in summer. Did we meet in summer? It might no. have been, no, because the Upfest wasn't on. We oh, ah, yeah, Upfest, there was no on. Upfest last year. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, this, this is the story of the blog. And it was not about street art and graffiti no. at first. It was most about the cities. But at the same time, uh, I have been taking pictures of graffiti since when I was a kid, because Rome was uh, one of the uh, 
um, the um, hottest scene in Europe back in the 90s. That's how old I am. And yeah, there were a lot of uh, metro and trains running past with all these names and colors. And I was taking a lot of pictures of that with a toy camera, but of course I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that it was graffiti or for me it was just color. I was a child and I like it that the city was colored. So um, yeah, and I, I found a way to mix uh, all the things in, uh, in the blog now. When did you first my work? Yes. When did you first <laughs> decide to then, so you've always been interested in graffiti. You've always loved, loved the colors and the street art. But mm -hmm. when did you start to really write about it? Because you started the blog and it was a travel blog and you go into these yes. random and places was, that nobody goes uh, to. Yeah, and I was, it, it started a little bit uh, <clears throat> together with the blog, but because I was writing, for example, I was visiting a city and I was writing, I was visiting all the outskirts and a lot of abandoned places, like abandoned factories where many artists go to train. So I was writing of uh, street art and graffiti, like something that you uh, stumble upon in those places that I was writing about. So maybe the focus was a neighborhood. Also in Rome, I wrote a lot about the hospital of Rome, that is my city. So it was not just about traveling. I was writing a lot also about the city where I lived in. And since when I have this blog, I lived in Rome, in Bristol, and now in Amsterdam. So yeah, it was, uh, it was, street art was something that you were finding in that specific area. So maybe I was also talking about, I don't know, some uh, minor site. It might be whatever, a church, a building or something else. And then there was also street art or maybe a hall of fame or a um, abandoned factory with some pieces, pieces inside. And then uh, to write about that, I was uh, researching who is the artist. And then when social media became a thing, I realized that I was also, because when I opened the blog, there were no social media. And when they start, you know, becoming uh, widespread, I realized that I could also get in touch with the artist. So it was not just, okay, I can decipher the name in the graffiti and I can say the name of the artist is this, but I can also reach him. So maybe I could ask when you did that or why or what are your inspiration, whatever. So that's, that's how it starts. How, did, how did, the, uh, did the artist respond to you at first that you were this, this uh, person that suddenly wanted to write about their, their work? I think the same way they respond now that's that's not so different like uh it depends in the moment the that uh i mean uh, what they are doing in the moment that you, that they receive the message if they are they are willing to do an interview or they are kind of open they they are very enthusiastic and then there are many artists that they are just uh not into it maybe they are they want to stay anonymous or they don't want uh, that people write about uh, their art, so uh, they simply ignore <laughs> your messages. And that's also the good thing about festivals, because if I have the, chan the chance to see people in person, it's obviously it's, uh, uh, it's easier to start a conversation and to from there to uh, start an interview, let's say, but uh, it doesn't have to be you know, the format of the interview. And if, uh, if I just send you a message on Instagram and maybe you have, I don't know, thousand of, hundred of thousand of followers, why it's, uh, it's difficult that you just decide, okay, now I, also because my, my interview usually are in person, first of all, and they are very long, they are really conversations. So why you should invest uh, one hour of your time to talk with someone that you don't know and that's why it's easier if you meet someone in person. What, what, uh, where, because you've, you've traveled so much, you've, you've covered the scene um, so much uh, now, what are your favorite places? What's, what's the, Bristol. if you were to, oh Bristol, straight away, Bristol. Yes. yes. No hesitation. Yeah, and actually when I moved there, I want to stay there longer. But then after a few months, there was the Brexit thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'm just starting to look for a job here. And like, uh, there is no way I could uh, uh, base my, myself here. So I was like, okay, it's too much 
uh, it's too hard to start, you know, look for a job and mm -hmm. grow, grow, grow. And then I already know that there, will, there is a deadline on it. So I, I went back to it after, a, no, I did up first. And then a few months after up first, I was like, okay, it, I tried. It was really nice to live here. What was it about the scene in Bristol then that you, you liked so much that you, you, you put that um, above others? Okay, besides Bensky. That <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, Bensky, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the obvious. No, that uh, it's not just the scene, it's, uh, it's the seat itself. Mm. It's, uh, it's super cute. You've been there, it's super cute. Of course, all yes. these Many times. pastel houses, and they're all. Uh, it's really. Uh, um, people are super nice in, in Bristol and warm. And the, the street art and the graffiti is something that is, uh, is part of the city. It's not a subculture, it's not just in those neighborhoods because of whatever, because of ghetto or because of gentrification or like uh, any reason. In Bristol is everywhere and also it's something that the whole city um, cares and relates to. Like there are old people like grannies at Upfest that are um, ex expressing their opinion. Like, mm -hmm. I like this, I don't like that, I like that style. And it's really part of the city. And Bensk itself, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, everybody loves him there. Like, I mean, of course, also in other countries, everybody knows who is Bensky. Um, it's the same way that nobody knows who is Bensky, but uh, in Bristol is um, I don't know. You you really think you really feel that uh, the this creativity is not just street art and graffiti. It's the uh, the creative vibe. The um, yeah, it's something that you feel that is everywhere, and is it's it for everybody takes part in it. Something. Yeah, no, I, and how does it compare to where you currently are in, in Amsterdam? Uh, it's the, totally the opposite. <laughs> like Amsterdam, uh, since when I came for, I came for um, uh, um, the museum, they are opening a museum in Amsterdam North about uh, graffiti and street art. So this is the reason why I'm here. And I came to work there as a writer and content creator. And so since the beginning, which is one year and a half ago, I start interviewing uh, a lot of artists from the Amsterdam street art and graffiti scene in the, also in the past. And each one of them, everybody was saying that the scene was very different before, that now the city is super clean, which is because it became a very rich and very expensive city. And all the artists that I interview that were from, you know, from graffiti, from street art, from completely different uh, scene, some were from Amsterdam, some were expat living in Amsterdam, like for example, the London police. They are, I think, one of the best example of street art in Amsterdam, but they are uh, individually from London, hence mm -hmm. the name, like from England. So a lot of them that are also uh, kind of, yeah, representative of the scene here, they are not from here, but all of them, they were saying that um, the city is not uh, like it used to be, and that street art and graffiti now are dead in, uh, in Amsterdam. So yeah, that's, that's also my opinion. There are a few Hall of Fame that are really, really active. There are a lot of good artists living here. And of course they are uh, still alive, still painting. So yeah, yeah, you can find nice thing around. Uh, you can spot nice uh, stuff, but still it's not the, there is no vibe. At least I, I can't uh, feel it. Then maybe it's my perspective, I don't know but uh, it's not Bristol for sure. No, but Bristol's a great. super cool thing of the scene in Amsterdam is that uh, I was saying to you that I start um, taking picture of graffiti uh, in the 90s in Rome. And the, one of the biggest uh, crew in Rome is Thierry Vu. And they were uh, among the first to paint the metro, the underground in Rome. And um, part of this crew, I don't know in numbers, but I think half of them, let's say more or less, they moved to Amsterdam and they moved to Amsterdam back in the 2000 something, like long, long time ago, way before me. 
and um, yeah, and I met them here. You, like you, after so brother. many years, yeah, I interviewed, yeah, you interviewed them, Nico. Didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I interviewed one of them, Nico, and then I met the others, you know, in parties, dinners, yeah. whatever. And yeah, this is cool. I mean, they are Italian, <laughs> they are not, but they are part of the scene here because they are printing in Amsterdam since many years. And yeah, they're, I mean, there are cool artists. And of course, also, if you consider the art scene of the city, not just street art of graffiti, there is a lot of art here. Also, in institutionalized art, there are great museums, great galleries. And, but it's, yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not Bristol. I no. think nothing. No, <laughs> no, places are. no more places are. Okay, Julia, thanks very much for talking to me. It's been fun. Thank you. Yeah, have a great rest of the weekend. Okay, have a nice weekend, you too. And yeah, see you soon.